Hello, and welcome to Paradigm Blog. How can we live by our values? And furthermore, how can we contribute something to the world around us and make it better? Those are my two main topic and interests in life. Next one is a concept called an optimal self-esteem. I do think it is only a rhetorical question if I ask E, do you know anyone that just defends his or her opinion and is not willing to open up to a chance that he or she might be wrong? I see many youngsters having or even forcing their head up high. I imagine in order to lift their spirits and build that self-esteem or confidence. I see leaders that are hesitant to ask for or listen to opinions. I feel like it is because they would not know how to respond to some notions. Positive psychology makes a substantial distinction between optimal self-esteem and fragile high self-esteem. Fragile high self-esteem is recognized when people behave in illogical and irrational ways, when they are guided by self-protection motives and just try to, in whatever way they can, remain their image high or intact. Optimal self-esteem, on the other hand, is what self-esteem is by the rule book. A combination of self-trust, trust in your own ways, for example, to achieve goals, self-sincerity, being open and transparent towards yourself, being able to be critical towards self, that is, to admit mistakes and wrongdoings, self-awareness, having a clear and objective picture about yourself, not exaggerated not over or undervalued, and possibly some other. An optimal self-esteem is what could allow us to speak truth in our workplace or elsewhere in our lives. To be clear and truthful about our challenges and our misdoings. To not hide what we may need as an organization just because someone wouldn't take it well. If we want to advance into what we like to call a wisdom society, it does not work without optimal self-esteem. Write an article about optimal self-esteem as one of the core concepts of personal authenticity. Again, authenticity about awareness, about wanting to see the real picture and have the truth before your eyes. Here's the text with pauses inserted as per your guidelines. Optimal self-esteem, the bedrock of personal authenticity. In the quest for authenticity, the concept of self-esteem plays a pivotal role. However, not all forms of self-esteem contribute equally to the journey of self-realization. Positive psychology draws a clear distinction between fragile high self-esteem and optimal self-esteem. This article delves into the essence of optimal self-esteem and its significance in fostering personal authenticity. The misconception of high self-esteem. Often, we encounter individuals who stanchly defend their opinions, unwilling to entertain the possibility of being wrong. Youngsters holding their heads high, leaders hesitant to seek or consider feedback, these behaviors may be manifestations of what is known as fragile high self-esteem. It's a form of self-regard that's built on shaky grounds, primarily driven by self-protection motives, aiming to maintain a high, albeit often unrealistic, self-image. Fragile self-esteem, a house of cards. Fragile high self-esteem is characterized by irrational and illogical behavior. People in this category are often seen reacting defensively to criticism, showing reluctance to admit mistakes, and displaying an exaggerated sense of self-importance. This kind of self-esteem is akin to a house of cards, vulnerable and unstable, often leading to an authentic living. Optimal self-esteem, the authentic alternative. 
Optimal self-esteem, in contrast, is the genuine, stable, and healthy form of self-regard. It's the kind of self-esteem that aligns with the principles of authenticity. This form of self-esteem is multifaceted, encompassing self-trust, self-sincerity, critical self-reflection, and self-awareness. Self-trust and self-sincerity Self-trust refers to the confidence in one's abilities and judgments. It's about trusting oneself to achieve goals and make sound decisions. Self-sincerity, meanwhile, involves being honest and transparent with oneself, acknowledging both strengths and weaknesses without bias. Critical self-reflection and self-awareness Being able to critically reflect on oneself is crucial. It means having the courage to admit mistakes and wrongdoings. Self-awareness is about maintaining a clear and objective view of oneself, free from exaggeration or undervaluation. Optimal self-esteem in action Optimal self-esteem allows individuals to speak their truth, be it in the workplace or in personal life. It enables them to be clear and truthful about their challenges and shortcomings, without the fear of damaging their self-image. This form of self-esteem doesn't shy away from admitting organizational needs or personal weaknesses, fostering a culture of transparency and growth. The Pathway to a Wisdom Society For a society to evolve into a wisdom society, optimal self-esteem is indispensable. It's about seeing the real picture, desiring the truth, and being authentic in one's awareness. A society where individuals possess optimal self-esteem is one where authenticity, growth, and collective wisdom thrive. Conclusion, Embracing Optimal Self-Esteem In summary, optimal self-esteem is a core component of personal authenticity. It's not just about feeling good about oneself, it's about being grounded in reality, acknowledging one's true abilities, and being open to growth and learning. By embracing optimal self-esteem, individuals can navigate their lives with clarity, honesty, and authenticity, contributing to both personal fulfillment and societal advancement.